Cricket is one of the most popular sports here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And today we have the pleasure of being in the presence, albeit virtually, of a national cricket icon. Fifty years ago, His Excellency El Camino T. Willett made history by being the first cricketer from the Leeward Islands to play for the West Indies cricket team. Last week on March 9th, the Nevis Cricket Association coordinated a gala event dubbed Classy at 50 to celebrate this historic achievement. Today, it is indeed our pleasure to warmly welcome the distinguished cricketer, His Excellency Al Camito Willett, to you. Good morning, SKN. Good morning, sir. It Good is morning. indeed a pleasure and an honor to have you here today. Good morning. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, you're certainly welcome. It has been 50 years, quite an achievement. Uh, I do need to have your take on this because 50 seems to have come and gone almost quickly. What is your take on it when you're looking back? Well, your I, <laughs> I can't believe that 50 years has gone that quickly, really. You know, it seems more like 25. <laughs> Half of 50. <laughs> well, you barely look a day over 52, so I, I, I cannot understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some folks that I don't look older than 50, so they don't see how I'm celebrating 50 years of having made the in this team. Uh, precisely. I guess it runs in the genes and all of the fitness routines that you would have gone through and everything else. Well, yeah. yeah. I need to get back into my exercise too. I've been kind of idle for the last month and a half or so. Okay. <laughs> so, Mr. Willett, let's speak about the indelible mark you would have made on the nation of, well, our federation but more so Nevis and even the Caribbean at large being a cricketer. Yeah, well, you know, looking back, you know, I, I, well, when I did make it, you know, I didn't look at it as anything special to be truthful, you know, a man don't get excited about things, but, you know, with the greetings and everything from persons over the years, you know, I realized that I really would have made an indelible mark on on persons, you know. Mm -hmm. The turnout that we had at the gala was really, really good. Mm. They were catering for 150 persons and they had to fit in another 50 or so, I think it was. Oh. And many persons wanted tickets but couldn't get. You know, it's mm -hmm. a pity we couldn't find a place to host 500 persons. Mm -hmm. well, I do have to ask now, so, so what are your thoughts about being honored in this way? As you rightly said, you know, you were living your life. You never really thought about the acclaim <laughs> that can come from these things. And people are really honoring you for all of your achievements. How do you feel about that? Well, it's, it's a good feeling. But I said, you know, I really don't get too excited about things, but it's a good feeling. You know, I feel proud. You know, to be honored in that way, you know, with that gala, classy at 50. You know what I said, you know, <laughs> I take things as they come. You know, I, I don't get too excited, really. But it's a good feeling to have been honored in that way. Mm, hey, lovely. Did you have anything to do with the name? I'm, I'm just asking you, classy <laughs> at 50, it does have a nice ring to it. Can you be credited in any way with that? If I can. Be credited with the name of the gala in any way? Well, it was 50 years since I made my debut, so... <laughs> You're still classy. That's classy at 50, you know. <laughs> it was a classy occasion, really, you know. Some good food that... and everything, oh, good yeah. music yeah. and so on. You danced? Yeah. You know. <laughs> no, I didn't dance. Okay. I'm not a big dancer. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you, you know people were, were, were very excited you know okay. it was a classy occasion really okay. the people were well dressed and so on yeah. you know so people really came out you know for the occasion okay. I took you... many many pictures with persons after the dinner you know okay. there, there is a a photo of me you know, on a large screen, or not, well, not screen, large bit of material. I think it's 
something like cloth or something, but a really huge picture of me. And we took many, many, many photos there. Okay. We just you know, saw in front a few. of that. Yes, nice. That, that green. Quite dapper, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he matched, you, he matched the, the theme of it. So you said nothing well, really gets you. I hope I did justice to it. I didn't hear you, sorry? <laughs> no, say I hope I did justice. You sure did. class yet 50. <laughs> Certainly. You said nothing really gets you excited. So what was... I, I, would, I, I would like to think that you would have been excited to start playing the game of cricket, or you must have had some kind of excitement because you loved cricket. Well, when it comes to cricket, I started playing in the village with my old uh, friends from, I must have been three or four years old. We had a ground that we call the Boko Park, <laughs> not far from where I live, about 50 meters from where I live. Okay. And, you know, we played there nearly every day, we played in the road and so on, you know. Those days, it was all cricket. Mm. There, there, there was some football around, but I never really liked football. Okay. And we didn't have the, the other distractions and so on, like these young folks have now. <laughs> the game things and so on. Okay. So it was basically cricket for us. We played cricket all over the place, all over the villages. We, we used to walk to different villages to, okay. to challenge them, like Brown Hill and Cotton Ground and Jessup's Product Road and so on. You know, we, we played every, any little spot we found. Okay. We played cricket. Something there, big trees around, but we didn't worry about that. It was all cricket, cricket, cricket. I don't know if it's a thing with, I, I don't want to be, you know, starting a war between St. Kitts and Nevis here, but my grandmother is in a vision and she uh -huh. loves cricket. So I was about to say, I don't know if it's a thing <laughs> that Nevisions just seem to love their cricket a little more than conditions do. Uh, what did you love most about cricket, though? Well, you know, I really saw it as good fun. I, I was more of, a, more of a bowler, but I did some batting, too, and I really enjoyed bowling, you know, and like, like I was a spin bowler, and it was such fun to, like, draw batsmen down the pitch and leave them stranded and so on, to be stumped out and so on. <laughs> you know, it is... It, it was so exciting to like out fox oh. some batsmen. Oh. Like, like there's a gentleman from Thinkit that they call Greedy Liber. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of greedy for us. And, you know, I would tease him and he would come and most times he's left stranded. You know, so, <laughs> you know, that was fun for me. Okay. Leaving batsmen stranded. Mm. So they never, he never really figured out, you know, what your technique was. I mean, no, never even after he never really. Wow. Pardon <laughs> <laughs> you know. Victor Eddie, he didn't try much, as I said, at the hell of there. He, he was very stubborn, Victor. I didn't get him out many times. Okay. But he, did, he never got many runs off of me because he was more cautious, you know. Oh, I see. You okay. know, Victor had more patience than, than Stephen Labour, greedy. <laughs> 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 You've got greedy and you've got patient. I you got, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Mr. Ola, we're gonna yeah. take a short Those break. Days were really good days. Yeah, the fans, you know, were very excited. You know, people really used to come out those days to watch cricket. Yes. I remember when we started in Antigua, you had persons like 20 meters onto the field, something you're chasing ball, you know, between persons, you know. Because you know the, the, the park was so filled with persons, they didn't have the stands and so on, all those stands and so on. Then, so yes. persons basically were on the field, they're running through the, the persons with the boundary okay. 20 meters behind them. Wow, <laughs> you know, <and> so. <laughs> okay, and that, that's and, and you know, you, you, you would have heard of many stories of persons walking from Gingerland to town, from all over in St. James and so on, Newcastle and so on, walk into town to enjoy their cricket. You know, mm -hmm. Nimizans, you know, really like cricket. I think Nimizans really liked cricket there. We mm -hmm. still have some persons who really like the game, but those days people are crazy about cricket. Let us talk about your cricket career. We know it spans over 50 years from local to the masters. So tell us about the journey. 
of cricket? Yes, as I said, you know, I started playing cricket from maybe the age of three or four in the village with the bigger boys. And we, we played cricket all over the place. Wherever we found a, a suitable spot for a pitch, we didn't worry about the trees or the stones and so on that were around. At school, every break we, we got, we played cricket. It was cricket, mm. cricket, cricket. <laughs> there weren't many distractions around then. And as I said, I, I made the Navy team while at the Charleston Boys School. Mm -hmm. I, I got to play one cup match that year in 1969. A cousin of mine, Clinton Willett, he, he played for the team Spartans and he left for the Virgin Islands in 1969. He left just before the last cup match and I, I got the chance to, to play in that match. I wasn't really attached to the team, but I was asked to, to come and play that last cup match. And as I said, I got a few wickets there and was called to trials and I did fairly well at trials and got into the Navy team since 1969. And in 1971, I made my first class debut. I made the Leeward team from my performances in 1971. I got 36 wickets, won three matches. And those days it was combined islands. It was one playing by itself then. And I participated in the two trial matches against the Winwards and got into the Combine Islands team. That was in 1971, and two years after, in 73, I found myself in the West Indies team. I love how you say that you found yourself in the West Indies. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I did well enough. <laughs> because. <laughs> That that match, when I got the news, we, we were playing in St. Vincent, mm -hmm. Combinelles against Jamaica, and there was a bit of an uproar in the stand. They got the news, and they told one of the players on the boundary that I made West Indies team, so the player mm -hmm. ran, came to me and told me of the news. You know, we were playing against Jamaica then. I got my best first-class well. Regional figures there too against Jamaica mm -hmm. in the same match. Yeah, thanks. Did the motivation so, come before or after you got the news that you made it to the West Indies? Well, I noticed that the pitch sort of favored my bowling, so I was <laughs> happy to be bowling on that pitch, really, in St. Vincent, because, you know, it provided spinners with, you know, some good turn and uh, bounce, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I picked up six, mm. I think it was 40 ones or 39 ones, six for 40, I think it was. Mm. And then, yes, well, I, I got a few. I might have had three so before that news, and I got a few more. The five ball out of Jamaica, and we won that match against Jamaica in St. Vincent in 1973. The way yeah, that you so tell well, these stories, you... I feel like I'm there. I, honestly, the way that you're talking, <laughs> yes. you, you just yeah. have a way of describing things. Yeah. I feel like I was there with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you know, it, it was exciting then, you know. Mm, so something so, does get, get you excited. <laughs> yes, then, you know, <laughs> make it rest in the steam. Yes. You know, you know. Especially the first from the Leeward Islands. Nice. You know, Congratulations it, 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 on that too. It was exciting then. Nice. You, you know, thanks. I've got to ask, when you got back home, knowing mm -hmm. that you made the team first from the Leeward Islands, what was the reception like? What happened once you returned to Nevis when everybody heard that news? Uh, well, I, I think that I'm motivated. When I made the team, there was a little motorcade, I think. Oh, nice. Uh, it was either that or... Uh, when we we went back home from the Liberals tournament in '69, there was a little motorcade, I think, too. Even though the game ended up badly, okay. you know, in 1969, my first year of tournament, I forgot to mention that the game got messed up when a gentleman Howell was batting with Livingston Sergeant, 
he got a really terrible out. You know, he felt cheated and he decided I'm not going to walk. <laughs> and the wow. crowds came on and Ooh. so on and pushed him and so on. We left that wow. same afternoon. We we caught we caught a, a flight that same afternoon I came down. Okay. And I think we had a motorcade then. And when I made this squad, they were still in this squad. I think we actually had a motorcade when I got home okay. after that that first class tour. Mm. The shelf she used to call it then, yeah. Well deserved, sir. Yeah. So can you tell us about some of your other cricketing highlights throughout your years? Yeah, well, uh, that same year when I got all those wickets in 1971, the 36 wickets, you know, I got 14 wickets against Antigua. Oh. I got 12 against Montserrat and 10 against Senkit. But the, the Montserrat game, you know, Monster had 104 runs for one wicket at one point, and we bowled him off for 114. You know, I'll never forget that. I was bowling at the southern end, and I had none for 29. And then I was changed to the yeah. to the pavilion end, the northern end, and I got eight wickets for two runs in that spell. Yeah. Eight wickets for wow. two runs. Are you kidding? Yeah, it happened so <laughs> dramatically, <Two runs>. you know. <laughs> eight wickets. You know, wow. One for 29 and then eight for 31. Eight wickets wow. for two runs. Wow. You know, it happened so fast, you know. It was the, unbelievable. The look on the batsmen's faces <laughs> when they had to walk out to face you, I can only imagine. <laughs> well, yeah, some person this time looked really scared, you know. Yeah. Yes, oh. I looked really scared because especially the lower half of the batting after this mm -hmm. the top batsman got out so easily so the top batsman got out so easily i could yeah. imagine yes you know <laughs> what it was like for them plays on your mind <laughs> <laughs> did you have any friendly taunts on the field mr willett Friendly. friendly taunts any what friendly taunts so would you taunt them before they go to the crease the bat friendly Taunts. Talks. No, taunts. Like just you, your look to, when, like, like your look or your or your wink or a smile or something that will make that will get them intimidated. No, okay. no, no, you know. <laughs> you know, I, you know, all is easy going and so on, okay. eh? Okay. <laughs> you know, I don't try to intimidate that man. You know, some bowlers <laughs> will, will talk to batsmen and thing, you know. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, I never did that. Okay. Well, that's why. Yeah, I, I, yes, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I just did my thing in a quiet way, really. You know, okay. I never really tried to intimidate players. Okay. I was going to say, that's why it was classy at 50, because you kept it classy. So, Ooh, yeah, nice. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I got on with a number of the players those days from, you know, opposing mm. players, opposing batsmen those days, you know. Like, and then they, they made their debut in 1969 for Antigua. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we actually played together for the West Indies oh, nice. when we went to India in 1974. You know, oh. so, you know, up until today, we get along very good. That's wow. nice. With people like Alfred Corriette and Morgan from Montserrat, Jim Allen and George Allen and so on. And, you mm -hmm. know, like Greedy Leibard and Victor Eddy and Luther Kelly and so on from St. Kitts. You know, we, we, we got along very good <laughs> because then we, we came together to play for the Leewards or, or the Combine Islands. You know, we got along very well. Nice, nice. It's good to know that, that friend, those friendships remain, yeah, sir. Indeed, in indeed. our final moments, unfortunately, we have just about a minute left. Uh, I want to know if you could give some advice to anyone out there who mm -hmm. thinks that just because we might be from a very small country, we can't do great things based on your own experience. What would you say to people like that? Well, you know, I would have made it. So any other person from the small islands can do great things too. All they have to do is put in the work. That's great, As I sir. said, you know, as I said, it was all cricket. 
You know, if you want to be a cricketer, you have to play cricket. Yes. If you want to be a footballer, you have to play football. You have to dedicate yourself to whatever sport you want to get into, whatever endeavor you want to get into. You have yeah. to dedicate yourself. 